Wow, it's been so windy since we arrived in Campot a few days back. So we haven't really been able to go as far afield as we might have liked. It's just been that windy that we thought it would be quite dangerous to try and go up the core or even to the beach. So we've just been hanging around town, not doing much at all. So I'm off on my own today. Um, I don't wear the rig on my chest like Jeremy does when he rides. So um, my recording is a bit stop-start compared to his. Uh, first order of business is to get some petrol, then I'm going to go and see if I can find the Campot Railway Station and see what that's all about. Alright, I've made it to the train station. Here we are. That's it, in all of its beauty. I guess it warrants a closer look, so I better get over there and see what's happening. <laughs> I don't think there's any trains, but anyway, nowhere shady to park either. Hmm. Just a bit of perspective. That's what you're looking at when you come into the station at Campot. I've just parked over here. I wonder if people are living here. There's like washing hanging up. Hmm. There's some people around here too. Okay, here's the ticket windows. Nothing much happening. Hard looks. COVID signs. It's just two tracks by the looks. Yeah, not a lot to see really. Need to look for fun somewhere else, I think. Anyway, it's a good start. I wanted to see it. See what else is around here. It's in a different part of town. It's sort of um, away from the coast quite a bit. So not um, in an area where there's much to see. Just left the train station. This looks like a little commune hall. Really traditional wooden house just there. And just going down that dirt road, it'll take me back into town. I just stopped in at Kempong Bay Pagoda and I saw the pagoda gate and thought I'd go in. Bit of a shady respite. Strange situation. <laughs> Old mate followed me in and he's just over there. I don't know what he wants. He's got a gas lighter. <laughs> I'm not scared. I just, um, I'm not sure. I think he's got a screw or two loose. But <laughs> I might, um, I might not have a walk around as I might have otherwise. Anyhow, that was the short and sweet tour of the Kampong Bay Pagoda. Something I've noticed since we've been in Kampot, that white car down there, it's a driver training car. And there's another one. I've never seen that in Siem Reap. Anyway, after that um, abort of the temple visit, I'm going to try and find a different one. Then we're going to go and look at a mosque. Is, as you might have realized there's a lot of Muslim people living in this area um, because it's close to the border with Vietnam and there's a lot of Cham people that live down in that region in the Mekong Delta um, yeah so consequently there are a lot of mosques as well and I thought it'd be nice to have a look at one of those um, in contrast with the um, Buddhist temples so we'll go and do those two things now about to go in and have a look at this what but it's the first time I've seen a blue temple gate. Okay, I'm just sitting in a shady spot here at the Wat. It's just called the Buddhist temple on the map, so I'm sorry I can't give you any more information than that. Yeah, lots of nice open spaces, buildings around the outside. All right, we'll just have a quick look around. Okay. 
beautiful skies. Stupas to the left of me, stupas to the right. Which way to go? Over here. Feels a bit overgrown, a bit secret garden-y, which is quite nice. A bit of a sense of discovery, a bit of a sense of you don't know what you might find around the corner. It's all good fun. It's one of those more bell-shaped kind of stupas, as opposed to the, the more um, pyramid kind of style. I'm sure there's significance to that. Oh, this is nice. Got a seated Buddha in the middle there. And then a whole stack of um, other seated Buddhas around the outside. Lovely. I wonder if they use that for something. Loads and loads of shady seats here too, which is very pleasant. Nice and breezy. Shady. Nothing that you don't see everywhere, but just the way it's put together is a little bit different sometimes. Very nice. Again, there's a bit of construction going on. I think any self-respecting what in Cambodia is going to have some construction because it shows that you're getting good donations and being quite successful. I suppose they are businesses of a sort. Oh, look, fruits. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it looks like a misplaced coconut without its shell. Look at those flowers. Whoa. <laughs> So I just wanted to show you this because last time we were in Kampot, this was like a dirt track out here, but now it's all built up. There's a big piece of concrete here that they use to set up an evening market each day. And it's just full of guest houses and bars and who knows what else down here. Yeah. So we'll keep going up this way a little bit and see if we can find the mosque. So I've just come across the river road and down to the area where the mosque is. So I'm just going to show you this beautiful house, number 12. And the cutest little bridge. Look at that. The bike nearly takes up the whole bridge. go. The mosque is just a bit further up that street, I believe. And there we go. <laughs> wow, this is where the action is at. So it's like a lot of the, um, the Buddhist Wats here in that there's a school attached. So this is the mosque building here this bluey green one that you can see. See it has a minaret there. But yeah I've arrived at what must be break time. There's kids running around all over the place. <laughs> and like all the houses around the outside. Okay, I've got to stay close to the bike in case I need to make a quick getaway. Everyone knows geese are as bad as guard dogs. But look at the colour of that house. It's just fabulous. I don't know whether that was the mosque before because I've just come across this building. It looks to be a new mosque. Anyway. Lots of people working there. We got some movement here. <laughs> Very cute.
<laughs> I don't know where they're gonna go. All right, time to go home now. I was nearly home and I just came across this truck selling pigeons. All different kinds. Oh, and guinea pigs. Guinea pigs. Rabbits. And budgies. Look at these. Budgies. Native to Australia, the budgerigar. Maybe they've been smuggled. So there you have it. Just attach that to your motorbike. Stop on the side of the street and you got a mobile bird shop anywhere you want. I hope you're enjoying the series of videos from Campot. It's good to experience something a little bit different, I think. We certainly had a great time there, even though we're back in Siem Reap now, and we've got a few more videos yet to come in that series. Thank you very much for watching. We absolutely appreciate everyone who watches, likes, and comments on our videos. It means a lot, and it keeps us motivated to keep making more videos. If you want to get down into the description of the video, you will find links to all of our social media and links to other people making content in Cambodia. Also links to other stuff that we find entertaining and fun in YouTube land. So give those a look if you're interested and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.